Welcome to Horiba Talks. My name is Dr. Christoph Klotz. At Horiba, I'm responsible for the project management of our emission project. Today, I want to give you an update on the upcoming Euro 7 legislation. On the initiative of the European Commission, the Consortium for Lower Vehicle Emission, called CLAF, has been established and had the mission to develop the next generation of the emission legislation. The consortium is reporting to the bigger group, ACVES, Advisory Group on Vehicle Emission Standards. In this group, there are a lot of different stakeholders and everybody is asked to give their input on the future legislation. CLAF started its work in March 2019. On the right, you can see the overall time plan. And the plan was to have the final report by the CLAF consortium by September 2019, which has then been postponed to April of this year. In total, there has been 10 ACVES meetings taking place. And in those 10 meetings, the CLAF consortium reported on their findings and made a proposal for the future emission limits and the future procedures. But not only the consortium showed their reports, the stakeholders showed technical solutions, uh, reported about studies and programs, for example, for zero emission cities. So what comes next? The next step will be an impact assessment based on all the input the European Commission received over the last two years to make sure to see the impact of the future legislation, not only in case of air quality and cleaner cars, but on the industry as well. Probably there will be further meetings for coordination and consolidation in between, but what we know is that we expect the final proposal of the European Commission for the upcoming legislation by the end of this year. It is clear, clearly stated by the European Commission that the future regulation have, has not the objective to put an end to the internal combustion engine. Nevertheless, the guiding principles and objectives are that the future vehicles should be as clean as possible under all driving condition and over its entire useful life. The first working task of the CLAF consortium was to review the worldwide emission legislation to figure out areas where they see a potential to improve the current European emission legislation. The following so-called focus areas have been identified. There is a need to reduce the limit for already regulated components. Additional pollutants should be added and limited. It makes sense to shift to cover all driving conditions, the type approval process from the chassis dynamometer to the road using RDE. To cover the entire useful life of the vehicles, it is needed to enlarge the range of in-service conformity and durability demonstration. Finally, it is planned to simplify the future legislation by having only one legislation for diesel, gasoline and hybrid engines. In addition, an increase of the uh, application of onboard monitoring is planned. So what does this exactly mean? Here you can see an overview about the proposed regulated components and the proposed limits for those components. I don't want to go too much into detail here, just summarizing the major changes. So what we can see is that there will probably ammonia, methane, N2O and formaldehyde limited in the future. THC is no longer limited but needs to be measured to calculate the then limited NMOC. And you can see that um, PN10 is addressed in contrast to PN23. And you can see that the CO and the NOx limits are reduced significantly. As already mentioned, the idea is to shift the type approval process to RDE. And there, there are two major questions coming up. Will there be boundary conditions in the future legislation? And what about the conformative factor? Or what about the error margin? And the answer is, to make sure that the future vehicles are able to fulfill the demands of the legislation, there will be two kinds of conditions. There will be so-called normal conditions and there will be extended conditions, mostly differing in case of the temperature window and the altitude range that is covered by those conditions. In addition, trailer towing is added to the extended conditions and the limits for the extended conditions will, will be three times the normal conditions. 
The answer to the second question is that there is no ever imagined plant for the future legislation. It is already included in the proposed limits that are shown on the slide before. What about in-service conformity and durability testing? As mentioned before, that needs to be a larger range to cover the entire useful life and at the moment 240,000 kilometers and 15 years are discussed. So finally, I want to show you the estimated timeline. As I already pointed out, we are expecting the EU Commission proposal by the end of this year. At the beginning of next year, there will be probably a reduction of the conformity factor following the proposal by the JRC margin review report. And we are expecting the Euro 7 to entry into force by 2025. Thank you so much for your attention.